Greetings, everyone. Marty Ellen here in uh, Grace and Truth Fellowship. And today is November 1st. It's not only All Saints Day that uh, we celebrate, but it's also the Worldwide International Pray for the Persecuted Church Day. In other words, there are Christians throughout the world that are persecuted for their faith, particularly in um, communistic countries like China especially, cracking down on the Christian faith and believers to the point that they uh, execute them. Or other countries where the tyrant or the supreme leader is basically venerated or worshipped by people as, as if he's a deity himself, like North Korea, Kim Jong-un. Uh, you get caught with a Bible in North Korea and it's the end of the line for you. They may not shoot you on the spot, they might, but if they don't, they'll send you to a work camp where the life expectancy is about a year and you work to death. You are worked to death. So uh, this and other places like the Middle East, that's a different story. Islam, because Islam is such a austere religion that if you're an infidel, you can be uh, um, killed. You can just be eliminated especially if you were born a Muslim, raised a Muslim, in a Muslim family. It's, uh, it's so dangerous. So there are people all over the world, from east to west, that um, because they're Christians, they're persecuted. They uh, are in danger with their, with their jobs, with their families, with their, with their own lives, with all their possessions. And... Uh, um, it's, it's, it's nothing like what we know here. In this country, we have freedoms, we have prosperity, we have liberties. Uh, uh, it's nothing like that here at all. Now, Christians might be ridiculed as believing in myths, things like that, but, you know, what's that compared to being hunted down and killed? So, uh, just want to mention that and take you to a few verses. Uh, um, about that just in, in a moment, and this won't be long. And my question was to you, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Because if you don't, um, there is no hope for you. This is a difficult time. This is a you know, turbulent time. We're going to have an election in two days, and we've seen all this worldwide turmoil over this election in our country. And let's say let's say things go well and we go back to prosperity and peace after after tuesday it's not going to stop uh this world is getting darker and closer i believe we're it just seems to be the 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 consensus of much of the evangelical church is that we are living in the very last days of the last days we've been in the last days for the last two thousand years since the lord jesus came his second his first coming, he's, we're anticipating his second coming, when he comes in power and great glory and to, comes to judge, as in the book of Revelation. But uh, uh, these are the last days of the last days, and you can see that's coming on the horizon. Uh, there are open doors to the gospel, uh, but you can see them on the horizon beginning to close. So thank God we've taken advantage, the church, those of you that have taken advantage of these open doors to share the gospel in many places, that's awesome because they're beginning to close. But for those of you, again, you're not, if you're not sure that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the most important decision you will ever, ever, ever make an entire eternity is, is, is what you think about Christ. Is he God the Son? Does your life belong to him? Uh, you can simply say a simple prayer, asking God to forgive you, asking the Lord Jesus to come to your heart, wash away your sins. You can be saved. Your life can be changed in a moment transform from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light of God's dear son. So with that in mind, for those of you that uh, do claim to know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're arrested and put on trial as being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? How would you plead, by the way? Would you plead guilty as charged? Or no, 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 I'm not really a Christian. I just go to church sometimes. So I want to <laughs> give you 
Let's just take a look at the Bible real quick. Start with me. I'm just going to look at a couple of verses. Won't be long. Do you going to look at Colossians, the great apostle Paul. Now, even nowadays, in the Middle East and in Chinese uh, communism and in Korea and many places throughout the world, when people consider becoming um, a believer, putting their faith in Christ, uh, they realize that they may have to choose between faith in Christ and facing execution. In other words, we don't face that. You know, we don't face that here in this country. But in other countries that is opposed to the gospel, when you trust Christ, you become a, an enemy of the state in Chinese communists or, or, or other dictatorships. Or in Muslims, you become an uh, infidel in Islamic countries. So those people are keenly aware that when they trust Christ, it may really cost them their very lives. So they have to weigh this all out to see if they're all in or not. It's no little, uh, it's no like testing the water here in this country at all. Nothing like that. So the great apostle Paul, he was uh, finally arrested, you know, by the Jews in Jerusalem. Long story in, in the book of Acts, taken to Rome. He was going to be ambushed and killed. He finally, he, he can see the Jewish plot coming. He finally, because he's a Roman citizen, he asserts his Roman citizenship several times in the book of Acts to further the kingdom of God, to, pre to, to preach the gospel, his freedoms. He had tremendous freedom because he was a Roman citizen. So he, <laughs> he exercised his Roman right to stand before Caesar for what he was charged for. What was he charged with? You know, preaching a different religion, you know, talking about a guy that was crucified and is dead, and now he claims he's alive again. So, so anyway, he, long, long story short, he ended up being taken to Rome. And this is where we are, where he wrote several letters from a prison in Rome. I want to start in Colossians, Oh, chapter 4, the last um, chapter in Colossians, Colossians, I say, I'm sorry, and chapter 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all prayer also for us, plural, that God would open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, captivity, jail. Turn with this. Well, next page, uh, go to the last, uh, last verse in Colossians chapter 4. He says, The salutation by the hand of me, Paul, remember my bonds. Now, I mean, he's just telling them he's in jail. He's writing these, these letters in jail. We have them in our New Testament. So I want you to now turn with me to 2 Timothy. It was also written from that jail cell. This is what they call a pastoral letter written to Timothy instead of the, instead of the believers at Colossae, the Colossians we just read. This is written to a person, uh, Timothy. So ch this is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4. These are the last recorded words from Paul that we have. And I want you to hear what he has to say. Um, chapter 4 of 2 Timothy, verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. He's talking to Timothy, his son in the faith. Endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full reproof of the ministry, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not only to me, but, all to, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I'll just read the rest as well. No, let me go down to verse 11. Only Luke is with me. One person. 
take Mark, and he's writing to Timothy, asking him to come visit him, in prison in Rome. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Um, down to verse 16. At my first answer, no man stood with me. There, were no, there was nobody testifying on my behalf when, he, when his first trial, as it were, came. He's still in jail. He's got another trial date, evidently, to review all this. But he says, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me, standing by himself on his own, the great apostle Paul, in Rome, in front of Caesar, by himself. How do you think you would fare in a situation like that? He says, I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. So what we know is that typically uh, uh, Christian tradition says that at this imprisonment, indeed, he was let loose. There was no grounds for, you know, he wasn't leading an insurrection against Rome. He wasn't trying to overthrow Rome. He wasn't breaking the law. He was talking about the Lord Jesus. He was turned loose. Tradition says that after this, uh, shortly after this, Rome was set on fire. Nero blamed the Christians. All Christian leaders were suspect. They arrested Paul, beheaded him then because of his testimony for Christ. So, um, again, we just read his last words, his final words to Timothy. He was not afraid to die. He was ready to die. He knows that he'd finished his work and that his life was in God's hands, not Nero's hands. Remember uh, uh, Daniel in the Old Testament. I won't spend too much time here, but remember Daniel. I mean, this guy and his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they determined in their hearts that they would stay close to God. They would not offend God. They would not walk away from God. They would not walk away from their faith. And it nearly cost them their lives several times. Daniel when it was told, told he couldn't pray to anybody but the, but the, you know, the, the ruler. And uh, he prayed anyway to God, was arrested of that, thrown in the lion's den. That was the punishment. He survived the lion's den. No scratches, nothing. Remember his three friends? They wouldn't bow down to Nebuchadnezzar at all the music and worship this big image of Nebuchadnezzar. And if anybody didn't bow down, they'd be thrown in the fiery furnace. So they got ratted on, you know, they got ratted out. People, you know, Christians do. And so, and so Nebuchadnezzar says, look, I'll give you one more chance. And so they said, hey, look, Nebuchadnezzar, you know, we don't have to discuss this. We're not going to bow down. And our God is indeed able to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, even if we get thrown in the fire furnace, we perish. We're not going to bow down. So, the long story short, you know, he has the heat furnace heated up seven times hotter. How do you make it seven times hotter? But they made it seven times hotter. And they evidently had a, a platform that you could approach and throw things in, you know, including people. And so, including probably fuel, but in this case, people. So they had it so hot that the, the soldiers that escorted Shadrach, Meshach, and Gimel and threw, him, and threw him in the furnace. The soldiers died from the heat. They were burned to death. And then <laughs> the only thing that burned with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were the ropes that bound their hands, and they were free. Walking around in the fire, Nebuchadnezzar says, hey, didn't we throw three people in? Why do I see four? And the fourth one looks like the Son of God. Long story short, there's people all through the Old Testament Hebrews 11 is about the hall of faith. All these people, starting with Abel, all these people all through the Old Testament that did a great and incredible thing, staying faithful to God, willing to die for their faith, and then many of them, many of them actually being persecuted and dying for their faith, and especially the prophets. So with that, I just want to finish up with just one more verse in... Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter 29, just one little verse. King James says, The fear of man 
bringeth a snare, a trap. But whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. In uh, NIV, it says, don't fall into the trap of being a coward. Trust the Lord and you will be safe. We were just speaking about this morning in our Bible study and other discussions about people who will sell their souls for a little power, a little wealth, a little recognition, a little fame. Sell their souls to the devil for that. And the fear of man, because they want to be recognized. And they, they're they afraid of men. They're afraid. Uh, they, they want to protect whatever reputation that they have. And they're afraid to be identified with Christ. The fear of man brings a trap, a snare, a trap. Fear God and you will be safe. So, so don't fall into the trap of being afraid of men. Even if it costs you your life. Your life is hid in Christ. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, your life is hid in Christ. There's no place safer on the planet, in the world, in the universe, anywhere. God has you in his hand. And if you are serving him, your life is virtually indestructible until God says your time is up and he's happy with your life and, you know, whatever he's using you to do, whatever it is. So pray for our persecuted brethren throughout the world today. Uh, pray for this election. Things would go well and, and, that, and, that, and that we would use the resources that we have, the open doors that we have to share the gospel with others. And tell others of this great freedom, this great Savior, that is far more powerful than any government, and not to be afraid. So God bless you, and uh, in the worthy name of the Lord Jesus Christ.